Okay, let's show you how to deploy a micro K8s cluster, which is a new feature in Fortana 2.18. As you can see here, we have a brand new Fortana deployment with no environments defined at all. First of all, we're going to head across to DigitalOcean. We're using DigitalOcean here for the example, but it can be on premises, can be anywhere. We want to create ourselves a simple three node micro K8s cluster. Let's just choose New York. Let's just choose a basic environment. Let's create a password for the connection. NK8 01, three nodes. So again, here we're basically having SSH connectivity with a password. You can use SSH key, but for simplicity here, I'm just going to use a password. So password three nodes, create droplets. This will go and create three nodes in the background. Okay, those three nodes are now provisioned. So what we do is head back to Fultana here. We want to go to settings, shared credentials. We want to add credentials. Choose SSH, give it a name, K8s, it's root and put the password in that we used before. Disable the SSH key authentication for now, add credentials. Now we want to go to environments, add environment. You'll see new options here. Create a Kubernetes cluster, start wizard. Give this a name, NK8s. Use the credentials. We've only got one credential set here, but if you had multiple credentials, you could change them. And then you need the IP address of the nodes that you want to add to the cluster. So come back to DigitalOcean, you'll see node one, take that, put it in there. Node two. The order here matters. Uh, when we create a micro KS cluster, uh, the first three nodes will be defined as manager nodes and any other nodes as worker nodes. If it's a single node cluster, uh, then obviously just the first one will be a manager. If it's three nodes, all three will be managers in an HA cluster. If it's more than three nodes, it'll be an HA cluster, three, three managers and multiple workers. You can click test connections and see here that they're reachable. The Kubernetes version, in our case, we're going to use 1.24 and what micro add add-ons we want, metrics, ingress, and postpass storage for now. There's an option here for a custom template. If you had an existing environment defined in Fortana and you had created yourself a Kubernetes custom template, which is just a manifest, then you could choose to deploy that manifest automatically on conclusion of a cluster build. You could use this to apply some defaults if you wanted to, to deploy some basic applications, um, maybe Prometheus, you might want to do that. Um, then you can use a custom template and it'll auto deploy. Now we have provision, the installation has started. So I click close and we can see here now installing micro cats on each node. And we just need to wait a few minutes for this to occur. You can hover over and you can see the current state. In this case, installing micro cats in each node. Hover over again, it's now joining nodes to the cluster. See the status now changed, waiting for cluster to become available. Now CDN cluster, this is where it would be deploying the template if there was one. So in this case, it's just going to skip that stage quickly. Now it's going to deploy the Portana agent into that cluster. Agent is deployed. Portana is just going to wait for the agent to come online and establish basic connectivity. Updating the environment details inside Portana. Connecting to the environment. And the environment is now provisioned. So we can now come to the home page and you'll see the environment. Six CPUs, 12 gig of RAM, three nodes, exactly as we provisioned. So we can come into this environment now and we can immediately start deploying things to it or doing basic configuration. So if you click on the cluster, because we deployed the metric server, we've got already advanced metrics information coming in. So you can see we get information about the CPU and memory usage and reservations. Um, you can see here the micro case add-ons that we deployed. Here's the host path storage, ingress, and metric server. If we click on 
cluster setup, you'll see that we've automatically detected the ingress controller that's been deployed. Uh, and if you come down here, you can see the, the microcates host path storage has been configured as well, and metric server is enabled. Now you can make changes to these if you want. Um, we don't need to, but if you want to make changes, you can. So let's say that you want to uh, lock down the environment to make it secure. You come into container security constraints, enable pod security constraints, and you can turn on any of these constraints that you so desire. So if you want to stop your users from being able to run privileged containers in this new cluster, you can turn it on, turn it off. You can come through any of these things and then just hit save settings. It's now deploying the OPA gatekeeper inside the cluster. If we had to find any policies here, uh, by, by turning on any of the switches, we'd be auto-deploying OPA gatekeeper policies inside the service to for you automatically. So this makes it really, really simple to configure OPA gatekeeper and configure policies inside the cluster. We just wait for this to finish. Just takes a few seconds. Here we go. Constraints uh, applied. Now if we go to namespaces, you can see there's a new namespace, a namespace being created called Gatekeeper System. If we go into Gatekeeper System, we will see the components uh, of Gatekeeper that are running. Okay, so what's next? Well, let's create a namespace. So we'll add a new namespace using form. Just create it called X. If we want to have any constraints, we can have constraints, but at this stage, let's just have a plain empty namespace. Create the namespace. Now let's give access to this cluster. So we'll come into users and we'll add a new user. The user will be called Neil. We'll just give it a really simple password. It's not an administrator, so create user. So there's Neil user added. Now we go to environments, choose micro k manage access. And here I'm gonna give the user Neil. Now it could be a user or a team, so it doesn't have to be an individual user. If I had a team, which is Ordain to speak for group, uh, then you could assign access to a group of users, not just an indiv individual user. And here we assign the role that that user is going to have against the cluster. Now, what we are doing here is creating RBAC roles for you automatically in the cluster and assigning the user to that RBAC role. The first three roles here are cluster scoped, in, uh, environment administrator is the equivalent of cluster admin inside that cluster, operator. It gives the user the ability to see every single application and every single namespace, uh, but they can only interact with what's already deployed. They're unable to deploy anything new, unable to delete anything. The help desk role, again, they can see everything in the cluster, but they can change nothing. Simply a look or do not touch. The two bottom roles here, standard user and read-only user, these are namespace scoped. A user has to be given access to a namespace to be able to have any access into the environment. So a standard user is that. Uh, think of it as a namespace admin. And read-only user is the equivalent of a help desk user, but for a particular namespace. So if I give Neil a standard user role, create access. Now I can come into namespaces and give Neil access to the apps namespace. So I go manage access, the user Neil has access. Now, because under cluster setup, we have not restricted access to the default namespace, Neil will also have access to the default namespace. If we don't want that, we can just turn this on and we will now block access to the default namespace, allowing the user to only have access to namespaces for which they've been granted access. If I log out and log in as Neil, Come in here to the cluster, come into namespaces, and I can only see default and the apps namespace that I have access to, no other namespaces. Walk back out, Walk back in as the admin. Come in here again. Now let's say that I wanted to deploy an application. So let me just choose the apps namespace, add an application, and let's just call it Nginx. Uh, Nginx here, and I'm going to create a service, I'm going to publish port 80 and deploy application. It's going to deploy an application in the apps namespace. 
And once that's running, we can actually come in and decide to publish it externally if we like. So we could come in to ingresses. We could add a new ingress, choose the app's namespace, choose the public ingress class that Nginx deploys, and we could say hostname test.example.com. Obviously, that's not going to work here. Choose the Nginx service that we've defined and choose it to root and go create. And here we're going to create the ingress for that particular application that is deployed and running. So pretty simple to get that up and running. Uh, and we have now logging out, logging back in as Neil. Come back in here again, come to applications, choose the app's namespace. And you see there's the Nginx that was deployed because I have access to it. I can, I can see it and I can see the ingress that has been defined. I can come to ingresses and I can see the ingress as well and I can make changes to it. Of course, you still have access to the Kube CTL shell directly from within Portana. So you can just open the shell directly into that remote cluster and run whatever commands you'd like to run. Kube CTL get nodes. There's the nodes. Uh, again, this shell inherits the permissions of the user. So I'm unable to do any admin tasks. I can simply see what's going on. And also, uh, you have the ability to download a kubeconfig file. And this kubeconfig file is or allows Portana to act as a Kubernetes API proxy. And so the user can have that kubeconfig file on their machine, and they can use whatever local tooling they like, VS Code or anything else, to connect to the cluster through Portana as a proxy using their user credentials. So very, very simple to go from nothing to have a fully functioning micro case cluster with a metrics server configured, uh, as you can see here. We can see stats of the nodes. So metrics server configured, ingress controllers, persistent storage, um, and with OPA gatekeeper deployed and managed. So that's how easy it is to deploy with Portainer.